Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. You are welcome to today's lecture. In today's lecture, we'll be discussing about water, acid, bases, and buffer. So let's quickly highlight uh, what water is. Um, we know that water is the most abundant matter on Earth and also uh, in all living organisms. Uh, it typically, uh, each organism is constituted of about 70 to 90 percent water. And water must be present before any metabolic activity can take place in the cell. So water is very important because reactions, enzymatic reactions can cannot take place in living organisms uh, except the medium contains water. So it is uh, referred to as a weak electrolyte because it undergo a partial dissociation from two ions that are made up of hydrogen ion, which is called the proton, and hydroxyl ion, which is OH negative. So let's look at the properties of water. Um, water is the most predominant chemical component of all living organisms. Uh, most chemical reactions in the cell take place in aqueous medium. So enzymatic reaction, as I earlier explained, they, they do occur where there is water. Okay, so all the metabolic processes that are catalyzed by enzymes, they need, uh, the enzymes need to uh, carry out that reaction in uh, aqueous medium. So there is what we call hydrogen bonds, which holds the oxygen and hydrogen atoms together. Uh, you know, water molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen molecule. So it's hydrogen bonds that hold the, the, the atoms uh, together in the water molecule. So the oxygen of the water is, you know, is electronegative. As you know, from the periodic table, uh, the valency of oxygen is, uh, is two. The meaning and is 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 a non-metal. Uh, it requires two electrons to attain its what octet uh, or the inner uh, uh, state. So it is electronegative, and the hydrogen is electropositive. You know, it's hydrogen plus. So as a result, water is dipole. It's dipolar in nature because of that. There is a partial positive and a partial negative on the oxygen and the positive on the hydrogen atom. So it exhibits a slight tendency to dissociate. So when you look at the biological importance of water as a molecule with electrical charge distributed unequally about its structure, it is referred as what dipole because you have two hyd uh, hydrogen atoms in oxygen. You have um, uh, H2O, which when it dissociates, you form the hydroxyl ion and the uh, proton, which is H positive and and the OH negative, so the strong uh, dipole and high, high dielectric constant of water enables it to dissociate large quantity of uh, of charged compounds. Because of this nature, it can dissolve and uh, and allow some other compounds to what to be dissociated in it and dissolve it in the water. So the presence of hydrogen bond also enables water to absorb many organic uh, molecules that contain functional groups. Because of hydrogen bond, uh, so many organic uh, molecules that contain functional groups can be what uh, dissolved in water. So water provides an enabling environment for macromolecules to achieve stable structure in solution. We talk about macromolecules, the carbohydrate, the, the nucleic acid, the um, uh, proteins and also the, the lipids. So it enables those macromolecules to achieve a relatively stable structure in solution. So what is an acid? If we look at the concept of acid base and buffer, we first look at what acid is. An acid is a compound that dissociates in aqueous solution to produce a, a proton, which is hydrogen ion and a conjugate base. So when we consider let's see HA as our acid, when it dissociates, we have the H component that is uh, the proton and the A component, which is the other electronegative, uh, electronegative element. Let's say, for, for instance, when we said um, HCl, hydrogen is there, 
H plus and the CL is CL negative, chlorine is negative, right? So we can see it a compound that dissociate in aqueous solution to produce a proton and a conjugate base. The negative, the electronegative part of the acid is the conjugate base. So acid may dissociate partially. When it dissociate partially, we said that uh, that acid is a weak acid, or we can call that acid to be a strong acid when it completely dissociates in solution. So in, so in a solution, a weak acid establishes equilibrium between the proton and its conjugate base. So there is a kind of uh, equilibrium between the conjugate base and also the proton uh, when it's uh, dissociated in solution. So the equilibrium comes constant, and in that case is called the dissociated dissociation constant, which is called the Ka, where the K is the word constant and A is the is the word acid. So dissociation dissociation constant of an acid. So it's given by the formula Ka is equals to uh, the hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by the conjugate acid concentration times uh, all over the concentration of the acid. So whenever you want to make calculation, you should always remember this formula that dissociating the acid dissociation constant Ka is equals to the concentration, the product of concentration of hydrogen ion and the conjugate base. So hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by the conjugate base concentration, then you divide by the uh, acid concentration, the concentration of the acid, that is your, your Ke. So for a base, it's a compound that can accept proton in aqueous environment. For example, an ammonia that reacts with a proton to produce an ammonium ion. We can say ammonia is a base because it can accept proton in aqueous uh, solution. So let's look at um, calculation of pH, pOH, and uh, pKa. The pH of a solution is simply defined as the negative logarithm of hydrogen ions, ions concentration. So the formula for pH is equals to negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. And for pOH, that's the... Uh, 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 POH is the negative log of OH concentration. So if you want to calculate the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration, you use pH is supposed to negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. But if you want to calculate the POH, you use the negative log of OH concentration. So for example, if the hydrogen ion concentration of the solution is 4.2 times 10 raised to the power minus three, you are required to calculate the pH of the solution. So just use the formula, you substitute, you have pH is cos negative log of hydrogen ion concentration. So uh, this will give you the, uh, the log of the hydrogen ion concentration is 4.2 times 10 raised to the power uh, uh, minus three. So log of that will give you uh, 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 log of, 4.2 plus log of 10 raised to the power of minus 3. You remember the law of indices and logarithm. When you have a log of the same base and they are multiplying, as in this case, you have log of log to base 10 of 4.2 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So log to base 10 and you have multiplication. You can separate them by adding the two logs together. You say log 4.2 plus log 10 raised to the power minus 3 as what we have here. So when you press your calculator log 4.2, uh, log, uh, uh, log 4.2 is 0 0.62. While for log 10, you can use log, log 10 raised to the power minus 3. You can use calculator O. You can simply uh, use, man you can manually calculate. When you have log to base 10 and you have a rest power, log to base 10, although the base 10 is not showing, you know when you are doing logarithm and indices, when the base is not shown, it means it's base 10. So it's log to base 10 of 10 raised to the power minus 3. You know when you have log to base 10 of a number and you have raised to the power of that number, you can transfer the raised to the power to, be, to, the, to become what multiply, it's, it's going to now become a product of that log. As what we have here, we can have uh, minus three to come back to be multiplying log 
10 and you have log 10 to log 10 base 10 is one. Okay, so you have minus three times one, which is why you have what this is minus three here. So when you subtract minus three, when you subtract three from 0 0.62, you have minus 2.3. So when you substitute for hydrogen ion concentration in the equation, you have what we call minus, uh, uh, minus negative multiply negative they will cancel out so that you have your pH as 2.38. You can uh, actually look for other examples to, to attend, to attempt them so that you, you can have um, a mastery of, uh, of, of, of the concept. Although this is, is, this is basic um, calculation of pH, I, I believe you may not have problem doing this. So what is a buffer? A buffer is a solution that resists change in pH. So when an acid or a base is added to the solution, the solution resists changes in that pH. So we said uh, when either acid or base is added, there will be temporary change in pH, but the pH is quickly restored. So the buffer is a solution that resists uh, a change in pH when an acid or a base is added to it. So a buffer contains a weak acid and it's conjugate base. So we have a weak acid and it's what? Conjugate base. So example of a buffer solution are acetate buffer, which is acetic acid and acetate salt. We have bicarbonate buffer, which is carbonic acid and bicarbonate salt. So how is buffer uh, prepared in the lab? Okay. So how, sorry, uh, before we look at the preparation of buffer, let's look at how uh, buffers regulate the, the pH of solution. So what happens when we said that an acid is added or a base is added to a solution and it resists change in pH, we call that solution buffer. So how does it uh, uh, res uh, regulate the pH of solution? So if hydrogen ions are added to a buffer solution, the conjugate base, you know, it has, you remember, you see it contains a weak acid and it's conjugate base. So when hydrogen ions are added to the solution, the conjugate base, they act with the word excess hydrogen ions to form the word acid. Well, if, uh, OH is added to the solution. You know, in the case of hydrogen ions, it means you are adding an acid. But in the case of OH, it means you are adding a base. So when a base is added, basically you are adding OH to the solution. So when OH ions are OH negative ions are added to the solution, they react quickly with the acid that is present. You remember the buffer has acid and weak acid and it's conjugate base. So it will quickly react with the acid in the buffer to produce water and not conjugate base. So that's how. That's how it uh, regulates the pH of solution. So let's quickly look at how we can prepare a buffer. This, uh, to prepare a buffer, there is one important equation or formula that you have to put at the back of your mind. This is Henderson Hasselberg equation. It's very important. You can't do basic biochemistry and you forget this formula. It's very, very important because you will use it to prepare so many buffers that you are using in the, in the, in the lab. So uh, the equation is used to calculate the concentration of the acid and the base that are, are going to be used for the what preparation of the buffer. So you have the formula is pH is equals to pKa plus log of conjugate base all over the concentration of the acid. Okay, so you remember you will be given uh, the concentration of the acid. You will be given the concentration of the conjugate base, okay? And you have your pH that, what, what is the pH of the buffer that you need for the preparation, okay? Maybe the question will state, or maybe you are the one that is working in the lab and you need to prepare that buffer, you will know the pH that you require. So you set that pH and you have your pKa, pKa for that particular acid, and you take the log of the, uh, when you take the, uh, conjugate base, you divide by the concentration of the acid, you take the log of that and you calculate. So anyone that is missing from this equation, you can quickly use your uh, uh, pen and paper to calculate by making substitution, okay? And then you, you have your uh, pH of that particular buffer or anything that is missing, either the concentration of the acid or the conjugate base, as the case may be. So what is the biological importance of buffer? Body fluid such as blood and uh, cerebrospinal fluid, saliva and ETC, you know, body fluids, they have constant pH under normal 
physiological uh, condition. For example, uh, the pH of blood is 7.4, that of cerebrospinal fluid is 7 points, is, it ranges between uh, 7.30 to, uh, to 5.0, 7.50, while for saliva, it ranges from 6.5 to 7.5, okay? So this, they have their constant pH under normal uh, circumstances, under normal physiological conditions. So if there is an alteration in this pH, you know, the body will try to revive that by, you know, if you know homeostatically, you know homeostasis, the body tries to what, maintain the constancy of the internal environment. So both of us, they help, okay, they help this uh, uh, pH to be maintained because due to the presence of this buffer and this fluid, the, when there is change, slight change in pH, it will try to what, restore the normal pH, the normal physiological uh, pH because you know there are a lot of uh, uh, cellular activity that's taking place and you have enzymatic processes taking place. When we talk, when we come to talk about enzymes, you will see why it's important to maintain pH because enzymes, well, they have their specific uh, conditions, okay? They have their optimum pH that they work best. So if there is an alteration in that pH, it means there's not going, that enzyme may either be inactive or is sometimes be denatured, okay? So when that happens, it means it's not going to catalyze the reaction. So when the reaction is not catalyzed, it means a lot of things will happen, okay? So the hydrogen and the hydroxyl ions are constantly added to the body fluid as product of metabolism, okay? So we have um, these body fluids that we have ex already explained with their various pH. So thank you very much. This comes to the end. This brings us to the end of uh, today's lecture. Uh, I would love to see you next when we upload another video. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day.